Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. From home runs to hot dogs. Some peanuts and cracker jacks. The authentic American experience that Tony Atlas knows well. Tony loved baseball. He always dreamed of meeting the players while he listened to his transistor radio at night. Together, Julie and Tony Atlas wrote Neither. the children's book, 32 Letters. Every day, Tony went to the mailbox to see if he had gotten a response. And every day, his answer came in the form of an empty mailbox. The story about Tony's persistence growing up in L.A. as he worked to earn the attention of his baseball heroes. Tony had done what no one who looked like him had done before. He became the first full-time African-American bat boy for the California Angels. At Hanover's Alley Library, they share Tony's journey on this Juneteenth. The so hold on. We celebrating the first African-American bat boy for the California Angels now? God damn it, man. Like, I guess it's a great achievement, man. The first full-time black bat boy for the California Angels. Great. Salute to um, Ray Wall, man. Great, man. That's awesome, man. I'm touched. L.A. as he worked to earn the attention of his baseball heroes. Tony had done what no one who looked like him had done before. He became the first full-time African-American bat boy for the California Angels. At Hanover's Alley Library, they share Tony's journey on this Juneteenth, the day marking the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States. Really just inspiration that uh, African-American stories are American stories and like, and just to see a success story because like, it's not always the focus. But Eric Armstrong brought his daughter. You know, today and every day there are you know, millions of stories around this country of African Americans being so successful and part of this country. So it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. So this guy got a white wife. The guy who wrote the book, he got a white wife who helped him co write it. What the fuck are y'all complaining about, man? Two fucking Carl Winslow looking fucking son, man. <laughs> No, no. complaining about. You gotta understand, I their wives are inherently racist, and their families are even more so. Yeah, but what the fuck are these people complaining about? You're living a great life. You got fucking. You got fucking white wives. Nobody, you're not on here talking about, oh, I can't go nowhere with my white wife. The, the clan chased me and my wife off the road. Or we went to a restaurant and everybody <laughs> looked at us funny. Or right. we fucking, our kid gets funny looks because he, the kids say he's different when he's not black or he's not white. Like, none of that. You're complaining about some fucking bad boy from the fucking 1960s and shit. When, <laughs> when half the fucking players in the league back in the 60s were black. When I grew up in the 80s, man, most half of the players in the fucking league were black. In baseball. Yeah, Matt, Matt plays back then. I remember Matt plays three frozen. Yeah, yeah, fucking Daryl Strawberry, all the motherfuckers, man. Yeah, I had baseball cards with them motherfuckers too. Yeah, Matt, yeah. I had a state-of-the-art baseball card collection, man. It's the, my first job was at a baseball card store, man. All them niggas was black back in the 80s and the 70s. What the fuck? Who gives a fuck? These guys are living a great life, man. Look, man, you, you fucking... I don't give a fuck what your white wife looks like. You outkicked your coverage, man. Whatever, whatever she looks like. As long as she got fucking two eyes and a nose. And a vagina? Yeah, you 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 outkicked your coverage, man. Inspiration <laughs> that I'm out. Uh, African American stories are American stories, and like, and just to see a success story because like it's not always the focus. But Eric Armstrong brought his daughter. You know, today and every day there are you know millions of stories around this country of African Americans being so successful and part of this country. So it's, uh, it's pretty gratifying. Through hard work, Tony made history 
and he shares this message to the younger generations closely watching and listening to his every word. Truly, because of the kind of country we are and the kind of opportunities there are, truly, if you stay with your plan and you really put your heart into it and you really work at it, something good is going to happen. It may not be the thing that you're working toward, but something positive will come out of your tenacity. Okay, that's a good message, Tony. I mean, I, I'll take that, man. I, I, I ain't mad at you, Tony, man, for saying Yeah, that. I ain't mad at that. Yeah, man. Um, don't ruin it now. Don't go ruin it. Just shut up right there. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got yeah. to be like, oh, girl, shit. Yeah, <laughs> leave, it, man. leave it right there, Tony, man. Okay, while you ahead? Yeah, you did a great job, Tony. And the kind of opportunities there are, truly, if you stay with your plan, and you really put your heart into it and you really work at it, something good is going to happen. It may not be the thing that you're working toward, but something positive will come out of your tenacity. It was such a pleasure to listen in on this fascinating discussion here at the Atlee Branch. Plus, you're asked to watch out for other additional special readings and author chats that are scheduled throughout the month. In Hanover County, I'm Brendan King, CBS 6 News.